All right, one of my favorite places to visit is Frank Zane's private training studio. And uh, there's just so much motivation, so much amazing uh, equipment and history on the wall that I think you guys need to check this out. But you can see that's from the 1970 Mr. Universe in, in London. Arnold won it pro, I won amateur, my wife won Miss Universe bikini. What would you guys do after the show when you both won, you and Arnold? Do you remember, like, do you guys celebrate after a show? Or? Well, always, but we had exhibitions in Europe. Ah. We went somewhere and did exhibitions. I don't know where. I think I went to, to Germany after that. We went to Europe a lot. Certain places it was hotter. For example, Belgium was really hot. Never been to Spain for bodybuilding. England, very hot. Uh, France, Sweden. Netherlands, Australia big, uh, South Africa. I spent the summer 1971 training in South Africa and when the, from there just flew to London to compete oh, wow. in the universe. 71 and I didn't win it but I was back the next year and won it. That was a photo shoot on, uh, on Santa Monica Beach with Betty Weeder, Joe's wife. And that's early Arnold right there. You could see what he was all pecs and biceps. This is 1968. Uh, winning, Mr. look at the trophy for Mr. Man. Carried on your lap on the airplane. <laughs> no, I, I, we, we took it on board. Thought we were going to miss the plane, so we were running. Christina, we were running with the trophy. She's kind of in the front of and run into the, the waiting room, and everybody's waiting at it. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> it's are running with this huge trophy. How many covers do you say you have? I don't know. You lost count after what? 20, 30? Something like that, but yeah. you, you know, I didn't get paid, but that was always the prevailing opinion. Yeah. You know, at least with Weeder at first, we got free advertising space, but then it got to the point we got nothing after that. Started out with a third of a page. In 1970, we, we came out with courses. I had four courses and it was like $2 a piece, and you know, and that was good because I was teaching school. And I had a three third of a page ad, and then as, as it grew, I got a full page ad. And of course, I contributed articles, and it was a good working relationship. I mean, I, was, I, I taught school up till 77. And then I won the Olympia, and then I could make a living doing that. What about the other guys? Were they making like a decent living? I don't think so. There's really no, no way to make a living. Because, you know, it wasn't until I think it was like 1975 that we started doing bodybuilding seminars. And then it worked into, you get a posing exhibition, you'd pose the night before, and then you have a seminar the next day. And uh, you could walk away with several thousand dollars from that. I always tended to wait when I was getting in shape before I did those. Yeah. And then I would only maybe do a few. You can't really be traveling all over the place and doing exhibitions and yeah. stuff and, and then competing yeah. along with that. I mean, I, it didn't work for me. I actually started getting all this together in 1980, all this equipment, and it uh, evolved into a bigger gym in Palm Springs, two different locations, and then we moved here in 1998, and I, I set it up here. This is a perfect space for it. It's 600 square feet, and I got everything in here that just about anybody would need. This company was in business in the 1990s, Advanced Freeway Systems, and I got one of their leg presses. It's really good. It's a horizontal leg press. You see I have a band wrapped around here so you get resistance uh, at the end. Great. And I had it built so I have a rack here to do inclines or even if somebody wanted to squat, although we don't squat very much here, except on the leg blaster. We got dumbbells that go all the way up to 50. N yeah, they don't go too heavy because people that come here don't really train with heavy dumbbells. Yeah, they go up to like 50, 55s right there and then those two are different weights. But I have, they start at 27 and a half and go up two and a half to 35. And then my other chrome dumbbells start at two and a half and go up to 25. This is a great machine though. Yeah, for pullovers and also for, uh, for the tricep extension with the balls here. I really like this tricep extension a lot, yeah. more so than the pullover. I tend to do pullovers either with a kettlebell or with a dumbbell. And then my pec deck, I did an ad to get this for a uh, fitness trade journal. Yeah. But it's a, it's a really nice, I, I tried about five of them out and this was the best one. But uh, you know, I, I really don't use a lot of weight. And you can see I have, a lot of things have the rubber bands yeah. on them to get the resistance. This, this dip machine is really nice. Oh yeah. You guys notice he's got bands on every machine to make it added resistance. This is a good one, man. 
It enables you to use less weight. And you know, if you have injuries, that's a good thing because it's really the weight that tends to injure you more than, than elastic bands. And then of course, uh, my 40-year-old Nautilus leg extension machine, still one of the best yeah. as far as the resistance goes. So what Frank did with this machine to get a deeper contraction, he actually hacked off a yeah. little piece of the machine. Half inch off the bars. Just to get a little more contraction on your quad. And the seated calf raise, uh, very good. You know, my only advice on CD calf raise is don't do it first in your calf workout because it, it's a little hard on your Achilles tendon. You want to warm it up first. I built my calves. I, I actually, I was even, I was over 40 when this happened. I gained five eighths of an inch on my calves in one month by taking it each set to an extreme burn. You stay on the edge of cramping. You push it so hard, but that's how they respond. Yeah. Now, would you pause like at the top of the contraction? Or Always. Or were you more just speed, speed, speed? No, no, I, I would pause at the top and hold it for half a second. And then, uh, not, not on the stretch. But I've seen pictures of you guys. You would jump on each other's backs. To just do that, that one on donkey. Instagram with the three of yeah, us on yeah. his back. But was that just horsing around or yeah, you guys would yeah. really do that? Yeah. Uh, they were just messing around, guys. We did donkeys in the gym a lot of times. Like I would do them with uh, a partner and he weighed like 210 and he put a 45 pound uh -huh. Olympic plate on my yeah, upper yeah. back. And uh, the way we were doing it would be, on, the only time you rested would be when you're on the back. Yeah. Just on and off, on and off, you do yeah. eight sets like that. What is this? Did you redo? Do you ever see the Ricola commercials on TV? Yeah. It's sort of like that. <laughs> You could actually play this. I mean, a friend of mine's wife plays didgeridoo. She's got like a fiberglass one, but this is a pretty good one. They're made out of the trunk of a, of a palm tree. They just cut it in half and then they hollow it out. And this, I think this guy's in San Diego that makes it, yeah. And that is it. Like I said, my favorite place to train every time in San Diego. I gotta stop by Frank's and uh, see what he's up to. He's always cooking up something new. Well, you're always welcome, Sadiq. Thank you. And uh, you know, if you want to contact me, you just go to my website, frankzane.com, and email me. At email is zane0001 at aol.com. And I, I try to answer all the emails, so you know, it's no one else doing it but me. So I, I look forward to hearing from you if you have any questions. Take advantage of it. Opportunity of a lifetime to learn from a living legend.